viewing this video, that means you want to build a giant robot. It also means you're crazy. <laughs> so, uh, wiring is always the part that scares off most new builders. And I want to take a few minutes and use an anatomy analogy to help you understand the four main components inside your robot. The first part, and probably the most important piece in your entire robot, is the receiver. This comes with your radio when you purchase your radio, and if it doesn't, the radio will list out receivers it works with. It's a tiny little piece, as you can see here in this photo. But this is your robot's brain. Brains. If you're a zombie, this is your favorite part of the robot. But Brains. Uh, um, this is where the CPU is housed. It gets all of its signals, and it's what the antenna is attached to, the most important wire in your robot. If it gets cut, you lose all signal. <laughs> Match over. Um, but this actually processes all the signals that come in from the radio and then tell the other components what to do. Now the receiver is only hooked up to a single piece in your robot. Through a three wire bundle, the yellow wire, which is the signal wire. This is where all the instructions come from the receiver to the heart. Look, I drew one arrow the wrong way. Boop. <laughs> then it has a red wire, which is the positive. And this is where the heart, or the electronic speed controller, sends positive voltage to power the brain, aka <laughs> our receiver. And the last wire is always brown or black, which is the negative wire. And that's where used voltage comes back. Negative Ghost Rider. Ah, <laughs> uh, the peanut gallery. All right, so let's talk about the electronic speed controller. Well, all wires in the robot lead to the electronic speed controller. Wow! This is the robot's heart, and it is a glorified light switch. It pumps the energy around your robot the same way your heart pumps blood all through your body, the electronic speed controller pumps electricity to all sections of the robot. So that's why it can send the voltage to the brain to power it, and the brain sends signals back to it telling it what else to do. Tell me more! <laughs> the heart is hooked up to everything, but probably the most important thing it's hooked up to is the battery. All <gasps> ESCs have a black and red wire that come from it that connect to your battery. Now, I like to compare the battery to the stomach because when it's full, oh, the robot's ready to rock. And when it's empty, oh, he's too hungry to do anything. And I can't tell you how many problems in robots are solved by charging the batteries. So this is the robot's stomach where it gets all of its energy. This is the robot's muscle. This is my terrible rendition of a muscle. Yeah, muscle. <laughs> so so much like a snail. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. It's hooked up with either two or three wires. <laughs> the positive wire and the negative wire. Typically they will not use red and black, like a finger tech speed controller will use blue and purple. And that's because these wires can change, uh, change polarity. Positive one way, negative one way will turn the motor clockwise. But then if you flip it to negative that direction, positive on the other one, it'll turn counterclockwise. So this is the basic setup and the basic parts inside your robot and how they interact with each other. So this is a Castle XLX speed controller. This is gonna be the heart of Scorpios. Mamba number five. <laughs> We did use these when we fought Tombstone and Ice Wave in Season 5, and we were even using one for the weapon in Season 4. Uh, when you do open up your speed controllers, if they come with giant warning labels, I would recommend reading them. And first things first, I'm going to cut off these connectors that come with it and add the Anderson connectors that we use inside the robot. <gasps> it's very important everything has connectors going between it, that way you can service the robot faster when you're in the pit area. If you need to pull sections away or pull certain components out, if you direct wire everything and solder everything, that means you have to on-solder it 
when the time comes to replace it or work on it. They just came out with a new one, which we're actually gonna put in our weapon system this year and test it to make sure it's just as reliable as its brother here, the XLX. But unfortunately, this particular one has been discontinued. Um, this is a tool I love. These are some wire snips for larger diameter wires, and you'll notice they're curved, so the wire doesn't try to run away from you as you're cutting it which just makes life easier. It's also pretty dang good at doing a little bit of wire stripping. Just a little pressure, a little pressure, and pull. Twist this a little bit, and you can see this is one of the reasons I like Castle products. Look at that strand count. It makes the wires really flexible, but they'll still handle a ton of current. So this is my hydraulic tool. You can see I've got the little connector already loaded inside it. You're going to push the wire all the way in. Go, release. You can see we got our first wire connected. Rinse and repeat. Like shampooing. Attach the Anderson. This is the positive side. I want to make sure that little nub is facing upwards as I load this in. You're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers to push this tab down to allow that piece through. And that will slide in there. And then this guy will slide in here. Once again. Click. All right. So our next step is to attach these little connectors onto the battery leads. And so what I do is I sand the outside of this a little bit to make sure this will just drop on. And normally these are just crimp connectors that you just put the tool on and you smash it, just like my Andersons. But something I personally do, because I just don't trust anything in the arena, is I actually put a little bit of solder on this end, so it's kind of like a mushroom. In my mind, this helps them not get pulled out when the battery's dragging behind the robot and this connector is the one and only thing keeping your robot in the match. Um, I don't know any other teams that do it this way, where they do a soldering step and a crimping step, but this is personally what I do with Scorpios. Enough that I see this pool of solder start sucking in to the part. See it there, how it just sucked right in? Yeah. There it goes. All over how those parts are actually wired inside the robot. Now something Scorpios does, and a few other BattleBots do, is we make a giant division between the weapon system and the drive system. This way, if the weapon system has a surge or a problem or something crazy happens with your weapon, you'll still be able to drive and move the robot. A great example of that is when Black Dragon spent two minutes of his match completely on fire melting the weapon system to the ground, he was still able to drive and win the match thanks to the separation. So it is something I recommend you do. It also makes tracing problems a lot easier. So the first thing we do that I've already drawn here is we need a power switch that will interrupt the positive flow from the battery to the hearts. The reason for this, this is required by BattleBot's safety rules. The safety people have to be able to shut down your robot after the match, and so there are very strict things about having a power switch on the robot and having it labeled. So most of us use a Wayachi switch, which is shown here. This has to be um, mounted interrupting the battery's flow. So that's the first piece. Next piece is you're going to connect uh, the black or the negative to your hearts. You'll then use the two wires that come off the ESCs to go to each motor, and that will connect your right motor and drive motor to the right ESC and the left ESC. And last, you take the three bundle wires. This marker is not working very well anymore. It's dead, Jim. It's dead, Jim. You take the three bundle wires and hook those into your hearts. Right. Typically, <laughs> typically, you're going to use channel one and channel two for your two drives on the radio receiver. So, and then you're gonna ask your radio to mix this setup for you. 
So it will then regulate and time these two motors together. So this is the drive system. It's fairly straightforward. And this is what I'd recommend you work on first and get running first, because it's frankly the more important half. Hey! <laughs> no! <laughs> Next up is the weapon system. And I'm going to recreate for you uh, what Scorpios does, because <laughs> Scorpios has a saw motor and an arm motor. So we need two ESCs and two motors. If you didn't have an arm or a function, you were just a spinner, like Tombstone or any of the four wheel verticals, it's just on off switch, one ESC, one motor. But I'm gonna show you Scorpios's. So it's <gasps> actually- Secrets revealed. Completely identical to that one. <laughs> <gasps> Rinse and repeat, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So I just went ahead and I bound this receiver to this radio, um, following the instructions as included. I'm not going to go through this because it's different on each radio system. So the radio you choose will have a unique binding setup. The next step, we have all of our connectors on everything. And I, uh, I Martha stewarded this off screen. This we're just going to connect the three black ones together. And how we're going to do this is just line those guys up. Grab a quarter 20 screw, and then tighten that down, and then make sure to electrical tape it. Uh, the BattleBot safety people will come by if you have exposed terminals like this. They will tell you to tape that up, put it back, and fail your robot safety check until you fix that. So it's good practice to get it, start doing that now because it will be required later. We're taking the two hearts and we're connecting them to the Wayachi power switch. Once again, just a screw, a lock nut, terminals. I'm gonna crank these tight off screen since you don't need to watch me work a wrench. And then last- Are you sure? I'm sure. We're gonna take the last one, plug it here, tighten this, and then make sure to electrical tape all of this. Because if you do let these two things touch each other and short out, uh, you could fry the $500 of hearts, you could blow up the $500 battery, or the two grand in motors that are sitting here. So all of a sudden taking a few more minutes to use the electrical tape seems to make a lot of sense. Oh yeah, baby, work it. Work, cover girl. I told you they didn't need to see this. They need to see everything, Zach. Now it's time for a little bit of programming. So this is the Castle Link cable. This allows me to alter how these speed controllers work. Their default settings, when you take them out of the package, are for brushless motors, and specifically the fifth scale motor it's paired with. Um, I'm not using that, so I need to reprogram. I do use that for our weapon setup in season five, and so that one I could put in completely stock. But for our drive system, we need to reprogram these guys. So if you look on the back of the castle link, it shows a signal wire and a negative. And you'll notice I've done something special here. I've removed the red wire. Since I'm going to supply power via the battery, you cannot have the red wire in, otherwise you'll fry the castle link. So I plug this in. The yellow wire is the signal, the brown wire is the negative, and we make sure positive isn't touching anything. I'm then going to use the Wayachi switch and the power on key to turn on power to the speed controllers. Kind of funny not having the receiver or any of the other segments on this. But we now have power. You turn on the castle link. Do do do. And connects to the speed controller. It says your firmware is out of date. Please allow us to update it. Now, I'm going to be a little lazy here and load up my drive setup from season five, but I am going to take a few minutes to go through this with you guys. So under the basic tab. Okay, I'm just gonna show you the three tabs and the settings I had on each one. I went through this line by line, but it took way too long. Uh, this is what I used during season five. It's what I used during the tombstone match. However, electronics are not my specialty. If you see improvements that could be made, please leave a comment. 
those settings all set and calibrated, I'm going to hit update controller. And boop, all done. We have our brain here with the three wire bundles that connect it to the hearts. The hearts are then hooked up through their red and black wires to our motor pods for Scorpio's number seven. Both hearts are then connected to the Wayachi power switch and the Wayachi power switch is connected to our max amp battery. This is the moment of truth when I discover if I did everything correctly or if I screwed something up. So we're gonna power on There's the first beep and the second confirmation beep. When I push forward on the radio, we should see these motors move. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how you wire a battle bot. To see how to do the weapon half, please check out our other builder blog episode number seven, more weapon power. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Please like and subscribe because we got something special. So tell me, do you ever get sick and tired of duck jokes? <laughs>